Crafty Lumberjacks. Today we're getting crafty for Easter. And we did a couple of projects with the Maker X and we wanted to show them to you and talk about the process. Let's hop to it. Eh, that's eh, good. That's eh. good. Keep it in. We loved our airbrush calendar so much, we wanted to do the same thing, but to this hurricane. So we created a repeating pattern on Design Space and then cut it out with our Cricut. Of course, Teddy had to get in the action. He loves to come He's in always right around. As you know, yeah, of course. So we used a little alcohol pad to wipe down our hurricane before getting started. And we actually recommend doing that with anything you're working with, whether it be fabric or a hard material. Yeah, you just wanna make sure the surface is clean, doesn't have your oils, uh, you know, hair, you know, cat hair, stuff like that. So essentially we're making a stencil to wrap around the whole hurricane, but the length we needed was longer than the mats we had. So we had to cut it in two and then puzzle piece them together. Yes, we had no idea how to do this. I call this Frankensteining the beep. Uh, it, it, it was, worked, but yeah, a longer worked. mat would have been great. Yes. We've been doing a lot of reverse weeding lately, so we want to do the same thing with our little bunnies here. Uh, you know, we, we laid down our transfer tape and then set the material. We squeegeed it on and then tried to peel it back, but guess what? The Easter Bunny was not happy. It did not work, <laughs> you know, but that's that happens sometimes when you're working with the Cricut Maker or with any craft and you just designers, you gotta make, make it, it work. work. Yes, so that's absolutely. exactly what we did. And then we ended up weeding our bunnies until it looks something like this. We've done a handful of projects using the Cricut Maker to make a stencil. We've done stencil vinyl, uh, contact paper, and this time we're using vinyl and it was actually our least favorite. It was really hard to work with and it's not very cost efficient. We would definitely recommend the contact paper. We added our vinyl to the hurricane and then tried to match it up the best we could, but of course it did not line up, you know, <laughs> no, such is life. But we just used some scrap pieces of vinyl to fill in the holes there. Yeah, just so, you know, it didn't uh, spray through. And there then look he is. who showed up. Oh Again, had to get in there. But it looked pretty good and then we were ready to airbrush. We're using our Maker X airbrush. We're obsessed with this thing. It's battery operated, it's small, it's compact. And the great thing about using an airbrush is you really can uh, determine how much paint is coming out and it really pushes it out so thinly that it really doesn't cake or anything like that, which is perfect for stenciling. You get really nice crisp lines. Yes, we want to create an ombre effect here. So we started with the lightest color using the white, um, and then we're gonna add another color. Now we found out that the hard way yes, the last time. Did. Yes, we did. But yeah, also the white is really gonna help the yellow pop. We've gotten a few questions about airbrushing inside, and it's really not bad at all. We kind of do it all the time, and it really doesn't get everywhere as you would expect. A good tip is to cut open a bag and use that as a barrier or, or even use a box. Yeah, totally. We also recommend to try it out first on a scrap piece of paper or like you saw, we did it right on the bag there. Yeah, you don't want to start on your project. Also, it's really important that you clean out your airbrush really, really well after. Yes, once it was dry, we peeled off the vinyl for the big reveal. Oh my gosh, it looks really cute. Now, I do think you should uh, give it a sealant spray if you're going to keep it because it does scratch pretty easily. Yeah, you want to be careful not to touch it. It looks really great though. Yeah, we're really hoppy how it turned out. Uh, uh, we staged it with some flowers here. Yeah, but you could add a candle or even candy. It's really cute. Yeah, even some Easter eggs. Speaking of Easter eggs, we found these really great wooden eggs and decided to wood burn on them. Yes, also using our Maker X. Now we're not experts in wood burning, but we have done it a few times. One of our tips is to use a repeating pattern. Yeah, and keep it really simple. It, it really does look stunning if you just like, you know, repeat it enough. Also, another tip, safety first. You know, it does get a little fumey, so you might wanna open a window and of course it gets hot. So you might wanna use a glove or even goggles. Now we're just freehanding these, but you could totally create your design with a pencil to use as a guide. Now, if you want something even easier, the Maker X wood burner and most wood burners come with little metal stamp attachments. This was our first time trying them. So we were really excited to see how they would turn out. With the Maker X wood burning tool, you can pick your temperature. Uh, this will depend on the wood you're using on how high you want it. So it's always good to test it out before you do it. Now you just press it down, wait about three to five seconds and you're good to go. We do recommend doing a little bit of a rocking motion while you keep the wood burner down just because the egg is rounded. It'll help you get the complete image. 
every time we do a wood burning project, I'm like, I want to do more, you know, but who has the time? <laughs> but honestly, you know, it's really easy and super fun. And we just recommend to practice, practice, practice. And we're telling ourselves that. <laughs> yes, practice, exactly. Please. These look so great as is, but you may remember we made some watercolored wood burned gift tags for the holidays. And we just love the way those look. So we decided to add a little bit of watercolor to these. Yes, and if you remember, we drilled a hole in the bottom of our eggs with the Dremel that comes with the Maker X. And this way we can hold the egg as we painted with our watercolors. Uh, we just stuck a skewer into the bottom there. I thought it worked really well. We tried all different ways to paint these, kind of sloppy with a lot of water, with little water. My preference is uh, less water, more paint. It just kind of helps the, the paint pop. Yes, and this would be a great activity to get the whole family involved, get the kids, make those memories, because yeah, that's what the holidays are all about. Totally, and depending on the age, they could do the wood burning and they could paint as well. Depending if your eggs are gonna be handled a lot, you might want to seal them just so the watercolor doesn't rub off at all. We're so happy how they turned out. They look great. I'd say they look excellent. <laughs> yes, even Teddy loved them. Well, however you're celebrating spring or Easter, hope you put a little craftiness in it. Yes, you wanna hear if you're working on anything for the spring in a comment below, give us a like and subscribe. We're needy and have a happy Easter. Bye. Bye, -bye. Andrew. I'm Dennis. And we are the Crafty Lumberjacks. You have your space in need of some sprucing. Couple of guys worth introducing. They know their way around the craft store. Finding deals and oh so much more. What should you put in your kitchen nook? Trust Dennis and Andrew. They wrote the book. A little bit of glitter and creativity. Crafting up some fun is their cup of tea. Bring your hot glue gun. Grab some snacks. Time to get artsy with the Crafty Lumberjacks. Can't read my cue card.